it will happen in your lifetime. I'm sorry. I'm just the messenger. I didn't make it. Oh, come on, thingy, stop shaking. My phone holder is shaking a lot. I don't like it. Sometimes if I get it at the right angle, it doesn't shake. I'll try it. Anyway, um, it is what it is. I like the quote that Esther said, or Mordecai said to Queen Esther in the book of Esther. She was kind of freaking out because she had to do something really scary. And Mordecai was like, yeah, but what if you were born for such a time as this? So God knew you were going to be born at this time in history. And he's prepared. He's preparing you. He'll be with you. He will help you. And I'm preaching to myself with this, too. I have to remember, there will be extra persecution during the tribulation, but I'm sure there will be extra grace and strength, too. For example, um, a friend of mine at church is going through a crisis. Uh, she's having someone try to steal her identity uh, from a really large corporation. Actually, they tracked down the leak, and it was from a large corporation. And they're trying to go to the police, and they're trying to go to like you know the CEO of the corporation, and they're trying to figure it out. She and her husband, and she was talking about it at church. And she was talking about how God really showed up for her with it and really just strengthened her. And usually she would be freaking out. Like, that's kind of scary. Like, thousands of dollars, your identity, you know, really big deal. And instead she just felt peace. She just kept praying and she felt peace. And she was talking to God about it and she was like, I mean, she was kind of freaking out sometimes because let's face it, like that's our mind and our free will. But most of the time she was strong and had peace. And she was talking with God about it, and she was like, is this a test, God? And God was like, yeah, it's a test. And he's helping her with it, and she's walking through it with just, like, this supernatural grace and strength and peace. And I don't know what God's going to do, but I'm sure he'll do something, and it'll end up okay. In fact, God even started using it to help others. When she went to the bank to, um, like, you know, put her accounts on hold or whatever... She was talking to the bank teller, and he was a young man, and she, the Holy Spirit came upon her really strongly and was like, you need to tell him about me. You need to tell him he needs to make a choice in this world who he will serve. Either he will serve God and keep his commandments, or he will serve the devil and follow all the things of this world. Those are the two teams. You are either hot, boiling hot for God, or lukewarm, and you are cold and on the devil's team. There is no in the middle. I mean, yeah, cold and the, on the devil's team. There is no lukewarm. There is no in the middle. Jesus hates it when people are in the middle. It is only either one or the other. Pick what you will do. And that's a quote paraphrased from the book of Revelation in the first few chapters. So. Jesus says, he's talking to the churches, and the churches are a metaphor for actually a bunch of modern day churches as well. Jesus says, oh, that you were hot or cold. Oh, that you were one or the other, hot or cold. But instead you're lukewarm and I'm ready to spit you out of my mouth. That's some pretty serious imagery. Jesus is ready to like spit people out, like throw them up if they're lukewarm. It disgusts him. I mean, be one or the other guys. Be all for God because it's the only way into heaven. Or be none of it, because you might as well be none of it, because lukewarm doesn't make it into heaven. I'm sorry, I didn't make the rules, I'm just a messenger, it's just what the Bible says. Anyway, so God's really strengthening my friend and helping her with the persecution. And she was praying about it, and she felt like she was supposed to tell the, the little church that I'm in, you know, that, that that's what God's going to do during persecution. He is going to give us super grace and super strength to overcome things that are normally too difficult, and he will help. It sounds like the God I know. 
he would do that. He will. So, yeah. Should I? Let's see, is there anything else I should say, Yehovah? story I was kind of torn on including because it gets kind of deep and kind of personal and kind of intense. I'll have to put it in another video, the long story short, but this one time, I don't know, six months ago, I was under attack from a really huge demon. Probably one of the biggest ones I've seen in my life. Like, this thing ended up in an apartment because someone made a blood sacrifice in that apartment. Like, that's the honest truth. And then I moved into that apartment without knowing it. Oh, I, I learned it. <laughs> I, I realized it a little bit later that that demon was there, but that's a different story. And God told me it was summoned with the blood sacrifice. Anyway, um, so this thing was trying to kill me. It was a demon, obviously, because I mean, let's face it, I'm a Christian and it, demons are murderous creatures and it couldn't because the Holy Spirit came really strong all of a sudden and was like fighting the battle for me this demon was like really, really trying to get me to kill myself. It was really, 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 really miserable and strong. And God, just like the Holy Spirit suddenly rose up inside of me, he got really strong and he was like, no, I'm not going to let you do that. Like literally, no. And the Holy Spirit came so strong and he was like, I love you and I'm not going to let you do that. So the, the demon couldn't get me. Like honestly guys, I wouldn't have survived without the Holy Spirit protecting me. Yeah, I moved out of that apartment. So. Yeah. I guess I'm not thus saying the Lord said it was a blood sacrifice that summoned it, but I'm like 90% sure it was God I heard that said that. Because I couldn't kick it out. It had a legal right to be there. And it was like, and the previous renter, I did hear God say the previous renter was a warlock. So bad person. I got some of his mail and I just like dropped it. Like it was like even reading the dude's name was like pure evil. That dude was into some serious bad stuff. So anyway. 90% sure that's how the demon ended up there. They summoned it. Yeah. Random spiritual warfare story. Um, why do I have so many of those? Mm. I have the weirdest stories guys. Anyway, yeah, so, pre-trib was going to happen in the tribulation. Should there not be a pre-trib rapture? I'm kind of torn on the concept. Maybe there's a pre-trib rapture, maybe there's not. I don't know for sure. If there's not a pre-trib rapture, and we have to go through the tribulation, God will strengthen us. Hold on. We gotta merge.